You don't have a lot of Europeans today named Frankie and Johnny. I've got a lot of friends who are a few years older than me named Frankie and Johnny in Europe. And they were named by parents who were just enamored with the valor and the, the, the goodness of American troops that they met. And they were so crazy about American culture that they'd name their kids after big American pop stars, Frankie and Johnny. And uh, it's amazing, all over Europe, you meet these Frankies and Johnnies. Uh, so there was a time when we had that national brand, that goodwill, that was really quite powerful. And then for a whole decade, since 9-11, uh, America has been the kiss of death in any kind of marketing in Europe. I mean, you know, California Jingles used to sell cars in Germany. And I've got friends in marketing in Europe that their job was to comb anything that smelled like America out of their jingles. Because America didn't sell anymore. I was uh, lobbying for Bread for the World in Washington at, the, at Congress uh, last uh, year. And I, heard two, I learned two things. One, the brand of America. I was trying to get them to relieve the debt of third world countries. And they didn't have money to relieve the debt of third world countries because they, I, we were trying to get them to relieve $5 billion worth of debt from the most desperately poor countries on the planet whose half of their national budget is paying interest on that debt back to the first world, which is keeping them in po poverty. And uh, that same month, we were giving $5 billion of military aid to Colombia to fight their drug war. $5 billion. And my friends in Congress just told me, well, we're just, you know, we're just selling helicopters. People are making money when we sell them that stuff. It's $5 billion to them so they can buy that stuff from us and it stokes our economy. But that's kind of the, the mis misuse of that kind of aid. Well, the point is, the brand of America today needs to be better if we're going to import stuff because if people don't like our country, they're not going to want to buy our stuff. And the brand of America is improving, but that's a challenge for us from an economic point of view. The other thing I learned in the halls of Congress was the co comment I kept hearing was soft power as opposed to hard power. There was an inkling that you could get more national security by investing in soft power instead of hard power. Soft power would be undercutting poverty in uh, chaotic corners of the world uh, rather than uh, military uh, uh, strikes and so on. So there's interesting thinking going on, but these challenges are something you can think about when you're traveling and talking to other Europeans. Terrorism is a concern for a lot of travelers, and understandably so. And as somebody who's been teaching travel and leading tours for 30 years, there's always been terrorism, and I believe there always will be terrorism, and America will always be targeted. Now, we've got to get a grip about terrorism. Terrorism is overrated, okay? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not belittling the risk of some catastrophic in our country sabotage that kills tens of thousands of people. I think that's a serious problem that needs to be dealt with as energetically as anything anybody else. I'm talking about your safety if you choose to travel overseas. That is not a concern with terrorism, I don't think. Every year, 12 million Americans go to Europe, and every year, 12 million come back. There may be a bomb in London or a bomb in Madrid. That's tragic. Local people die. If you're very unlucky, you could get caught in that and, and, and be a victim also. But the fact is, 12 million go, 12 million come back. Tomorrow, if an American is beheaded in Madrid by a jihadist, it doesn't matter. It is still safe to travel. You cannot be terrorized by the terrorist or you are helping them out. You've got to keep it into a non-emotional, sensational, statistical frame of mind. In our country, every month a thousand people die violently because we have a lot of guns. It's not an issue, I mean, it's not a liberal or a conservative statement, it's just a fact. We're a mighty nation of 300 million people, and as a free, well-educated democracy, we affirm the fact that it's worth 12,000 American lives a year to have the precious right to bear arms. Now, that's a very easy case to make, because we're 300 million people. We're not 20,000 people, we're 300 million. We have something that's important, it's not perfect, we lose 12,000 people a year, that's how it's gonna be last year, that's how it's gonna be next year. Europe decides not to have the right to bear arms because they don't want to lose so many people to violence. You know, it's nice to have guns, but people die, so that's more important than the niceness. So they choose no guns, they lose one-eighth of the people to violent events in the street that we do. Europeans laugh out loud when they hear that Americans are staying home for safety reasons. <laughs> it's, it's almost comical how Americans overreact to terrorism. And I'll tell you, 
if you got your head on your shoulder properly, if you care about your loved ones, you'll take them to Europe tomorrow. <laughs> we live in a dangerous country. <laughs> we really do. It's much safer in Europe, regardless of the headlines, than it is walking the streets of Spokane. Okay, there's just no question about it. It's just sensationalism with this terrorism. So, I know it's not popular to say terrorism is, is a lot of hype and overrated, but we need to get a grip because something's going to happen down the road and we're all going to freak out again. And we just got to understand, we lose 70,000 people on the roads every year. Everybody knows you could save 20,000 American lives every year, 20,000 lives a year, if you agreed to drive 50 miles an hour instead of 70. Would you drive 50 instead of 70 to save 20,000 lives? Hell no. <laughs> I wouldn't. Get real. I got places to go. We're a mighty nation of 300 million people. We drive fast and we lose a few. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. Now, now the, the, when it comes to terrorism, Every time, if I ever write about America being an empire, it's a real hot button issue with Americans. We hate the thought of being an empire. It angers Americans. So it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what 96% of humanity thinks. 96% of humanity looks at us and sees an empire. Not a bad empire or a good empire, just an empire. We are 4% of this planet. We spend as much as everybody else put together on our military. We have military bases all over the planet. Only we can declare somebody else's natural resources on the other side of the globe vital to our, quote, national security interest. The people who own those resources would at least like us to be candid enough to say vital to our accustomed material lifestyle instead of cloaking it in something more high and mighty. You know, we just want their stuff. And we got the guns to get it. It's remarkable how the rest of the world looks at us and we don't understand what they see. When it comes to issues of desperate importance to the, to the miserable half of humanity trying to live on $3 a day, we are outvoted in the United Nations routinely 140 to 4. 140 to 4. I try to be credible. credible. I, I check this stuff every time I'm giving a talk. I go to the web and I read about it, you know? And over and over again in the United Nations, it's 140 to 4 on issues like child labor in the third world, landmines, militarization of outer space, water issues, third world debt, and so on. Who stands with us? Israel, Marshall Islands, and Micronesia. Now, to be honest, I don't know how it's changed in the two years since Obama's been in, uh, but it's, it's probably not a lot different. It's just a very interesting sort of uh, dynamic. Now, throughout history, there's never been an empire that didn't have angry people on its borders nipping at it. That's just what happens when you're an empire. And uh, empires always dehumanize or degrade these enemies by calling them something insulting. Barbarians, Romans had barbarians. Habsburgs, what did they have? Anarchists, there's an anarchist that killed Franz Ferdinand. And terrorists, we've got terrorists, okay? So I think as long as we're perceived as an empire, we've got to get used to having a terrorist threat. And we've got to keep the risk in, in stride. And we've got to be real about what is the cost of, being, of living out your economic footprint on this planet where everybody else sees you as an empire. You're going to lose a few people or you're going to have to have that struggle. So that's kind of the story with terrorism. In Europe, again, I, I wouldn't give it a second thought. Um, I always think it's more dangerous here in the United States than over there.